I'm thinking Paul had some folks that griped all the time at, at Thessalonica. What do you think? Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in every situation because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Y'all get caught complaining a little bit every now and then? Just a little bit. A little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. Well, sometimes we need to remember this. Do you like to be around people who just complain all the time? <laughs> no. Well, nobody else does either. And so, you know, Paul's reminding us, pray all the time. Give thanks all the time. No matter what's going on, if God's allowing it, it's okay. And that's part of our witness. That's part of the way we witness in our life. Because when we don't do that, we must be suppressing the Spirit. Because he says, don't suppress the Spirit. Well, it's just a side note. Just an extra today. Freebie, okay? Didn't even have to pay for that. Gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of John. First chapter. I'm going to ask you to rise for the reading of the Lord's Gospel. A man named God, uh, John, excuse me, a man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. A couple of places during the scripture, I'm going to stop for just a moment and elaborate. We too have a mission in this life. And it's to testify to the light. This is John's testimony that the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him, Who are you? And John confessed. He did not deny, but he confessed, I am not the Christ. I am not the Messiah. So they asked him, Then who are you? Are you Elijah? John said, No, I'm not Elijah. Are you a prophet? John answered, No. So they asked him, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What is it that you say about yourself? Now, I know this is kind of sad, but it's true. Down through the ages, every now and then, something happens that causes the church to need to change a little bit. How do you think the church usually responds? We don't like to change, all right? A new idea comes down the pipe, and we don't like that new idea. We, we, we're comfortable doing what we've been doing. We, we've grown comfortable. We're kind of set in our ways. And that's what's going on here. See, John comes and he's, he's preaching this new message. And it's a message that they haven't heard in a long time. So the thing that's going on here is the Sanhedrin, most likely, has sent out some of their folks to check on this new guy. John the Baptist is out there and he's preaching a message that they haven't heard in a very long time. It's not a new message. It's just new to them. They haven't heard it. Well, they're a little uncomfortable. I mean, it is their job to get rid of all the false prophets. So they send him out to check. See, they don't, they don't, this whole change thing, it just doesn't work real well sometimes in the church. Just a sidebar. Something to think about. John replied, I am like a, a voice crying out in the wilderness. Make the Lord's path straight. Just as the prophet Isaiah said, those sent by the Pharisees asked, why do you baptize if you're not the Christ, not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the great prophet? And John answered, I baptize with water. Someone greater stands among you whom you don't even recognize. It's a shame that sometimes in our church even today, someone with a message stands among us, but we don't recognize them because they may not be saying it like we want to hear it. Or maybe they've never stepped forward with an idea before. And, or maybe they're younger than we are. Well, they can't know as much as we do, right? There's no way they can say anything that we really need to hear, right? And that's what John the Baptist says. Is you guys don't even understand the Messiah stands among you right now and you're not aware of it. You haven't recognized it. But he's there. And he says, he comes after me. But I'm not worthy to untie his sandal straps. This encounter took place across the Jordan in Bethany, where John was baptized. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Would you bow with me? Father, I give you thanks for this, your holy word, and Lord, I give you thanks for the way that you use it in our lives. 
As I come this day, O oh Lord, I pray that the message that is given will be your message. That the words that are spoken would be your words. And as we gather as your people in your name, O oh Lord, we pray that the way that you use this message to change our lives would be according to your will. And we will give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory for the amazing things that you will continue to do. Amen. You may be seated. Last week we talked a little bit about this. We talked a little bit about John the Baptist. We talked about our job as testifying, as being witnesses. We didn't really elaborate a lot on it. That's kind of what this morning's about. I asked earlier how many of you guys are friends of mine on Facebook. If you're not, I would encourage you to be. I don't post a lot of crazy things. Every now and then something funny. But a lot of scripture and a lot of encouraging things is what I try to keep out there in front of you. And I know a lot of you guys do the same, and I really appreciate the difference it makes in my life. That's part of how we testify. That's part of our witness in, in life. That's important. Because everything we do is seen by someone else, and it, it matters. It has an effect. And one of the things that uh, I sometimes get in a little trouble about is, is someone will say, well, that doesn't matter. And I'll say, oh, no, everything matters. Everything matters. Even the little stuff. Well, every morning when I get up, I look on Facebook, and I'm looking specifically for one thing first. Uh, I began hearing, because of a friend of mine on Facebook, uh, uh, devotionals by a gentleman named John Michael Talbot. Have y'all ever seen, you've seen some of the stuff that I share? He's a Catholic priest. And I really enjoy it because I preach from the lectionary, and although you, you guys may think, well, the lectionary readings are only for every Sunday, so we had an Old Testament reading a while ago, and then we had an epistle reading, and then now we're in the Gospels. Well, actually, there is a lectionary reading for every day of the year, including the days in the week, you know, between Sundays. And so, John Michael Tappan, he will do a, a two-minute devotional every morning. And I figure, if I don't have a couple of minutes to read the Scripture, which is today's sermon text, and then a couple of more minutes just to hear what he's got to say about it, what does that say about my faith, right? Well, I, I've grown to really like it, not because I feel a duty, but because it really enlightens my day every day. And that's one of the things he talked about today. He said, you know, just like John the Baptist had a mission, that's what it said in the beginning here, his mission was to testify to the light. We too have that mission. We too have the mission to testify to the light, to witness to Christ coming into this world. In all situations, and all circumstances, it's kind of what Paul was talking about a while ago. In all situations, no matter whether it's going good or not, you need to be glorifying God because people around you are watching. They're watching to see what's going on in your life. And so today he was talking about this. And what he, his point was, how are we preparing the way for others to see Jesus? You know, prepare the way of the, the Lord. That's what, that's what John was, was giving him in the, in the wilderness. That's the message he was delivering. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. And so the question during the devotional was, how are we doing that? Well, we talked about that last week. That was my charge. As you got ready to leave, at the end of the sermon, I said, how are, that was a question, you remember? I asked you, how are you preparing the way for the Lord in your life, in your family, and in those around you? How are you doing it? What are you doing to make sure that that becomes a reality? And so today I wanted to get a little bit more into that. What, what does that really mean? And, and one of the other things that John Michael said in his devotional this morning is sometimes we feel like we're a voice crying out in the wilderness. Have you ever felt like you're in the wilderness? When you're, you're in the wilderness, there's not a lot of other people out there, right? It's like that old saying, if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there, does it make a sound? You've heard that one, right? Yeah, trust me, it still makes a sound. But anyway, that's, that's the question. And sometimes I kind of wonder the same thing. I'll give you an example. Some of you guys get my email devotionals in the morning, right? Some of you get my text that I send out. It's a hundred and, I don't remember how many now, 110 or 12 or 15 emails. And if you want to get added to the list, I'm glad to do that. And then the, the text messages that I send out, you know, they're little, little encouraging texts, little, little texts that give us a little guidance sometimes. Well, that's up to 240 some odd people that I send out. And every now and then, my faith might wane a little bit, and I might, during my task of sending that, that scripture out, I might be tempted to ask myself, does this really matter? 
is there anybody that's really going to read this today? And lo and behold, at least once a week, at least once a week, somebody texts me or calls me and tells me what a difference that one little, that one little scripture made to them that day. And so I, I know that it does matter. I know that it matters very much. And so that I, I'm encouraged. John must have felt that way. John the Baptist at first, as he went out in the wilderness and he began to preach God's word. Well, lo and behold, the crowd started to come. Because they hadn't heard a message like this in 400 years. It had been 400 years since the last of the prophets spoke to God's people. And so people came because it made a difference. And more and more and more came. And so that's my message. Uh, that part of it is, you know, when you're wondering if it makes a difference what you're doing, it always makes a difference. It always makes a difference. Look what happened because he was obedient and he continued with his message. So many. It says all the people in Jerusalem came out. All the people in Jerusalem and surrounding. Can you imagine the crowd that that was? That's a lot of folks. A lot of things going on. That's why I got the attention of the church leadership back then. And they sent some folks out to see what was going on, right? They wanted to know. It was a little bit concerning to them. Well, see, anything we do makes a difference in the world around us. And we need to remember that. I think that Paul must have been thinking a little bit about John the Baptist and all the difference that he made out there when he wrote, uh, I think it was Paul that wrote in Galatians, in my opinion, when he wrote in Galatians 6, 9, never grow weary of doing good. For at the proper time, you'll reap a bountiful harvest. That's an important message for us. People are watching everything we do. People are affected by everything we do and say. And it's up to us as to whether or not in our actions and in our words, we'll be preparing the way of the Lord. Will we be making the path straight so that others can come to know Christ? Is that important to us? You know, we need to ask ourselves. So as I, as I think about those things, it's so very important to me to remember that. So sometimes we struggle. We, we're not sure maybe everything we do, how it's affecting others, but we know that it does. Because we're affected so often by what other, others do around us, aren't we? See, it always matters. Well, so when I ask, how is it that we're preparing the way of the Lord? Last week I said, are you? What are you doing? I want to talk a little bit about that this week. And the message doesn't change. i got to tell you, go down through the Old Testament. The great prophets that come along, they always have the same message. Repent and turn back to God's ways. Repent and turn. What do you think, Patricia? Is that a pretty good analogy? Repent and turn back to God's ways. Come on back home. God's got a plan for his people. You guys are drifting away. Come on back. So even though there would be a new prophet come along, it's always the same message. It's always a message to call God's people back to him. Same message with John. So my message to you today is just kind of the same as what you hear from time to time. We find this message in Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, is what Jesus said. I've come to proclaim good news to the poor. You remember that? The Spirit of the Lord is upon all of us to do the same thing. What are we doing to proclaim the good news? What words do we use? What actions do we exhibit that change the lives of others with the good news? The gospel of Jesus Christ. We go to Matthew 25. I can show you another place. You can go to the Beatitudes in Matthew 6. But let's talk about Matthew 25. How is it that you are preparing the way of the Lord? What are you doing to witness to the coming of the light of the world? Well, one of the ways that we do this is by loving others like Christ loved us. We find in Matthew 25, he says, if you're feeding those who are hungry, if you're clothing those who are naked, if you're giving drink to those who thirst, if you're visiting those who are sick or in prison, you remember those scriptures? See? When we're putting the needs of someone else before our own, those are actions that speak louder than our words. Those are things that testify to the coming of the light. Here we are in Advent. We're, we're, we're working our way toward Christmas, the birth of the Christ child. We'll celebrate with great celebrations everywhere, giving a presence to show our love. 
But we need to be thinking about this whole Advent thing every day of our life. What are we doing to prepare the way for the Lord? Are we feeding those who need to be fed? Physically and spiritually. Are we giving water to those who thirst? Physically and spiritually. Are we making a difference through our actions? You know, if you wonder whether or not it makes a difference, if, if, if you really are that voice crying out in the wilderness like I spoke a while ago, and you kind of wonder, come with me tomorrow afternoon to call for help. Help me help some folks out with their car and ask them what they want to pray about. And hear them give thanks for the food they just received or the turkey they just got that they couldn't have afforded to buy for themselves. Yeah. And you may say, well, there's some down there that are getting things they don't need. Yeah, there are. But you know what? When you help one that really needs it, it makes it all worthwhile. That's something to be positive about. See, those are ways that our witness does make a difference. Or sometimes we maybe ask ourselves, what about the money I put in the offering plate? Does it really matter? Does it really change anybody else's life? Once a year, at least, we talk about our apportionments. And we might ask, does that really make any difference? Are we really sending money to the general conference that's going to make a difference in the lives of somebody who really needs it? Or is it just to pay the bishops and the district superintendent's salary? Well, i got to tell you, if you go to annual conference with Patricia and I, you'll see some differences that are made, won't you, Patricia? You'll see how it's changed the world around the world. Not just in our local community. I mean, we get a chance to do that here. That's what we do. That's part of our witness. That's part of our testimony. That's part of how we serve in our mission to tell others about the coming of Christ, to show His love. But boy, when you participate in giving to the Methodist Church, you give to a worldwide organization that's always meeting the needs of others in mission and ministry all around the world. See, it always makes a difference. It always matters. Every little bit of it. And so today, when you're asking yourself, how is it that we're really changing the world around us? I want you to ask yourself, what is it that we're doing? What am I engaged in? As I said, our actions speak louder than our words. And sometimes we forget that as well, don't we? So as we conclude today, I, I want to I ask you this. When's the last time you forgave someone? Is that part of your witness? When's the last time that you love someone who seems unlovable? Linda would say, just this morning. <laughs> when I gave Gary a hug when he put this shirt on. <laughs> no, really. We all know somebody that we just think, gosh, I don't know why somebody hadn't already run over with a truck. <laughs> when was the last time you felt love and compassion for them? When was the last time you forgave someone for something they had done or said? I like to look at the post that Tony Evans puts on Facebook too. And one of the, the posts that he had recently was, when we don't forgive, it's our way of telling God that we don't trust that he can do something with this pain or this disappointment in our life that could be beneficial. That's what we're doing. We're saying, God, I don't trust you. Just don't trust you. I, that person hurt me. I'm, we're going to forget your word about forgiveness, and I'm going to go with what the world says about get me. Right? Yeah. Sometimes we forget about that. Other ways that we share our witness. Because the rest of the world doesn't understand that. There's a ton of folks out here that are clueless about why we believe what we say we believe. Part of the reason they're clueless is because they look at us. Let me give you an example. I'm really big on saying Merry Christmas instead of Happy Holidays. Okay? But I know some brothers and sisters in Christ that when someone at the mall says Happy Holidays to them, they're going to look at them with a condescending look and that corrective attitude and tone of voice that their parents used when they forgot to take out the trash at age seven, and they're going to say, It's Merry Christmas! That ought to convert them, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm giving it a lot. I want my... Oh, yeah, right. Okay, you see where I'm going with that. 
Here's, 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 here's what the question I want to leave you with. If you're wondering in your life whether or not your words and your deeds are witnessing to the light, the coming of the Messiah, Christ, into your heart, into this world. If you're wondering if, if they do that, this is, this is what I want you to ask yourself. Did what I just said or did the action that I just took let someone else see the love of Christ in this world? If Jesus would look at what you just said or what you just did and tell you, you know what? That showed them my love. That you're witnessing to the light. If it didn't, then what you really need to do is suck it up, come on and get back in line with me, and think about it again, and try it over until you get it right. See, because sometimes I struggle and fall short too. Sometimes I forget to share Christ's love in everything that I do. And when we're sharing the love of God through Jesus Christ, those are the things that make a difference in the world. That's what Jesus was trying to get across when he said, forgive, love, feed, give drink, visit. It's all about love. It's all about love. And everything we do in this life ought to be geared toward bringing glory to Him by showing His love to another. That's the way that we fulfill our mission, just like John the Baptist did. He said he had a mission. We do too. Our mission is to testify, just as His was, to the light in this world. And like Paul said in her children's sermon, Jesus is the light of this world. When we've got that light, we've got something that illuminates everything and makes our vision clear and shows us compassion and understanding and grace and mercy and love. That's my question for you today. Is that what you're doing in everything you do and say? I pray that it is. If not, like I said, join me in trying to get there. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.